Right guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well today. So today I'm going to touch on Ryan Gravenberch and I've got a little bit of a question for you at the end of this video as well, so stick around for that. So, Ryan Gravenberch. Seems like the kid's going to join Liverpool by all accounts. It looks like we've accelerated our interest in getting him. Even Sky Sports are now doing like a little bit of a review like on him now and like coming to Liverpool and stuff like that and he's up for the move. But I did a video back on this kid in January because I'm sure that I put it out there on the video that I've got a picture on my computer of his agent, which I'm going to put up now, put it around here somewhere. I've got a picture of his, his agent at Anfield in January. So we were definitely in discussions in January and bringing him in on loan. We know that Bayern had bringing in that um, Conrad, is it Lama or Lama from uh, Leipzig, who Liverpool were also interested in. So he's up for sale, is Ryan Gravenberch, and it looks like he's available for about 20 to 25 million. You know, Ajax have got uh, like a 7% uh, sell on clause or something daft like that in, in, it built into his contract. So we're looking at about 25 million, so the, the buy-in will get back what they paid for him. And I've had a look at his stats, and I didn't really want to touch on his stats while he's been at Bayern because he hasn't really had a chance to excel for me. But in his last season at Ajax, he had 30 appearances, 2 goals, 5 assists, 4 yellow cards. And he's very much a defensive midfielder. Like It says here, like in his defensive midfielder role for Ajax that season, he made 8 appearances, 1 goal, 3 assists. And then compared to that in central midfield, 34, 2 goals, 3 assists. Now, he seems to be able to play both there. He's got the body type of Paul Pogba, in my opinion, but he seems to be a bit better on the ball. He's very strong. He's very... Just... I, I don't know, guys. I just... I really... It gives me the vibe of a one Aldum, and it's not just because he's um, Dutch. It just... When I see him play in some of the clips I've watched over him for the past couple of days, I very, very much get a Genie one Aldum um, feeling about him. So I really think that this kid could come in and do really well at Liverpool now. I'd say this kid is pretty much dead certain to be signed by Liverpool. Obviously, it could be wrong. Things could change. Other clubs are interested in him. But the fact that his agent's been at Liverpool, and apparently Liverpool went to go speak to his dad in uh, last week in Holland, seems to be very much like this kid is on his way. Now, is this kid, in your eyes, guys, going to be someone who plays on the left, where, the, where Wijnaldum used to play, is he going to play on the right, or is he coming in to take over from Fabinho? I don't know. I, I think he could do both. He really could do both, could this kid? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a stabbing guess out there, and just by his stats here, of being a defensive in a defensive midfielder, a little bit better than being an essential, considering how many appearances he played there. I'm gonna say we'll probably play him as in it as the six. You know, behind people. So maybe this is where Liverpool are getting it done first because I honestly do think that we do need someone to come in as a midfielder who's going to play the six more prominently than any other position, basically, I think, because Fabinho has just dropped off a cliff. Like, he really, really has. And, yeah, we need to get that six position sorted out. I would have preferred Casado to come in and take over the six because he reminds me of, like, a Kante back when he was at Leicester and first joined Chelsea with the energy. But if we can't get him because of the price... And as well, guys, I think you've got to bear in mind as well this summer. I would be surprised if Brighton sold Casado and Alexis McAllister. I could see him selling one, but I can't see him selling both. I really can't, especially when they're going to go into Europe next season by the looks of it. You know, so we'll have to see what happens there with Brighton. But anyway, just to finish off this quick video on Ryan Gravenberch and my opinions on him, I wanted to just put something out there. So we all know what's going on with Mane at Bayern and Sane, yeah? So, hypothetically, right? Just hypothetically, if Liverpool have to sell Salah to help rebuild this team and let's say we get 70 to 80 million for Salah, would you bring back Mane for 20 to 25 million? I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying it's what I want to happen. I'm just putting it out there. You know, it's not worked out at Bayern for him. And as, we, as the way we've been told, you know, FSG are sell to buy and Salah is probably one of the big players that we can sell to bring money in to help us fund a Bellingham, for instance, if we were to buy him or whatever else positions we need to fill. 
would you sell Salah for 70, 80 million and then go and bring back Mane? And being honest with you guys, like Mane was probably the better player towards the back end when them two were still playing together, if you remember rightly. Um, but anyway, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about that. I am still just working on a video to do in regards to the players I want Liverpool to sign this season. And they're not all going to be big names. But yeah, um, that's probably going to come out later on tonight. Maybe after the game or something. I'm not going to do like a review on the game. I don't really like to do them. I might just give some quick thoughts on it. But anyway, guys, I'll stop waffling. Let me know what you think down below in the comments on this. Give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. And if you are new here, subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with everything else I've got going on. And I'll catch you in the next one.